Hey there, it's Ben Hassel here, and here I just wanted to focus on the basics of selecting clips. There's a few little tips and tricks as you're working with your footage and wanting to select different parts of your clips or all of your clips to bring down to the timeline that can be a bit confusing when you first start working with Final Cut Pro. So we're really just going to focus in on how we work up here in the browser to select clips um, and also some of the ways that when you're dragging across clips, Final Cut Pro can make selections that you don't necessarily want um, to have when you're making selections of your clips. The first thing we need to do is create a timeline here that we can bring some of our clips down onto so that as we run through this, we can demo, bring some clips down to the timeline. So we've got a bunch of footage here that we're gonna use as our example footage here to make some selections of. And the first thing we need to do is go ahead and make a brand new project. So I'm gonna click on new project here. Now I want the project to basically replicate the settings I have for my footage. So that way, you lose less quality than trying to set up your own settings here. And just make sure that when you're using different cameras, if you do use this automatic settings option, that you use a camera that is close to the settings that you want to export. So for me, it's 1080p. So if I was editing with some 4K footage as well, then I would edit a piece of 1080p footage down to the timeline, and that would set the, the timeline based on the, the first video clip. So we'll just call this clip selections, and we're going to pop it in the same event starting time code v0 and using the custom settings based on the first video clip we'll click ok so you can see now uh, we have our project set up here um, it's set up at 1920 by 1080 and our clips if we select one we can see by coming up to the info over here that the footage is actually shot at 60 frames per second or 59.94 which means that we can slow things down to half speed. So it's a good idea to get a sense of the frame rate of your footage. So 59.94 half speed will be 29.97. So we're going to get still get a nice smooth slow motion if we slow this down by 50%. So let's grab a clip here and edit it down to the timeline. So the first way that you're going to grab a clip is just to click on it once. And then when you see the hand, you can drag it down to the timeline. Now where this can kind of cause some problems is if you hover over your clip and start to drag, then you're going to actually make a selection if you don't click on your clip first. So you can see when I click on a clip, it selects that clip and allows me to drag that whole clip down to the timeline. And I can make adjustments that on the timeline as well. Um, but if I actually click and start dragging, first of all, then it's going to select that clip or part of that clip, um, which you won't always want. Sometimes you'll want to select the whole clip. Now we can stretch out and then go ahead and select the whole clip and then drag it down to the timeline, or we can keep the selection as we're hovering over our clips. Now, one thing you might notice is that as I'm hovering over my clips, we have scrubbing turned on, so we can see a little preview um, of the clip on the right-hand side there. Okay, so I can come to a certain point in my clip that looks a bit more interesting, so it's paddling for the wave. We'll click now and drag across, and we've got a nice selection of that clip until he kicks out on the wave there. So we've got nine seconds of footage. Um, so when I'm dragging this, you'll see the duration in that little pop-up window. And I can always adjust this selection. So I can always go back in and adjust it. And then when I drag down, it's gonna drag down that clip selection. So the scrubbing that we have up here, let's just come down to some other clips. The scrubbing that we have down here allows us to scrub across the clips. Now, if you don't see that, um, you may have to come down to some of these settings across here and change them. So this is the setting that allows us to skim or scrub across the video. This little, this first little button we see down here right in the middle of the screen um, on the right above the timeline. So you can see if we turn that off, now when we hover over these clips, nothing happens. And sometimes you might prefer that. You might not want things to jump around quite so much, but sometimes having the scrubbing on um, is useful. The button next to this um, I have turned off, it's the audio scrubbing. That can be a little bit annoying, so that means that when we have that turned on, we'll hear a little scrubbing of the audio as we're moving everywhere. So that's one I do tend to turn off. So if we come here now with scrubbing turned on, we can click and we can begin to drag across that clip. We can see those two surfers moving across the screen. And now we'll find a point here got about three seconds of footage which is a nice duration to, to cut into your your settings we can kind of see what's going on there there's a surfer on the wave in the background and these guys are walking across watching him catch the wave and now we can click on that clip and drag it down to the timeline and then if we were kind of thinking about this we might 
bring this clip of this guy on the wave and kind of cut this afterwards. And now I've got a nice little edit. These guys walk across, someone surfing in the background, and then we can cut to someone surfing as a close-up. So we can play with our edits there with the long shots and close-up shots. And another way we can make a selection here is with some shortcuts. So if we come down here and we are dragging across, if we press the I key, it's gonna mark an endpoint for our clip. And then as we scrub through, if we press the O key, it's gonna mark an out point, and we can then drag that down to the timeline. So I and O will always mark in and out points wherever you're working. The other shortcut that we have as well when we're selecting clips here, we'll just come down to a different clip. So this one, if we had made a selection, but then we wanted to go back to selecting the entire clip, if we just tap X, it's gonna then go ahead and select the entire clip. So now you can see I can come to the ends and modify these selections, but I can always press X to actually select that entire clip. If I hold down the Alt key and then press X, it's gonna remove any selection that I've got. So I go back to having no selection. And those shortcuts X and Alt X will work on the timeline as well. So if we've marked out areas on the timeline and then we do Alt X, it will remove those selections as well. So those are useful shortcuts to, to work with and to get to know as you're working in Final Cut Pro. So if we come here, we can again click and drag or use the I and O keys to mark selections. Got a nice little clip of this guy on the wave and we can drag that down to the, the timeline there. So normally when I'm starting out, keeping my clips nice and short will allow me to work nicely in the edit. The other thing that you might see up in the, the viewer here is they might be listed differently. So there's a couple of options up at the top for listing your clips differently. So if we click on this little button, it will toggle between the film strip and list mode. So here we can now see a list of our clips and the clip that we have selected will show up up here and that's the clip that we're now scrubbing through. Okay, so you can see as we scrub from left to right, that's the clip that we're, we're moving through. And the same rules apply, we can drag out a selection, uh, but we get a little bit more real estate to kind of select from there. Um, and we can also see a bit more information about the clips down here and we can modify what we see in these columns as well. So if we go back to the film strip view, which is this view, we can also zoom in and zoom out. So this little clip appearance button allows us to zoom in um, to our clips. So we just have to jump back to the film strip view. So this little clip appearance button allows us to jump to some options for our clip height. So we can change the clip height so we can see the clips a bit bigger. And we can also zoom into our clips so we see a bit more detail of those clips. So if we go right into the maximum zoom level of half a second, we can really see a film strip that shows a lot of detail of that clip, which can be handy um, if you wanna make selections in that way. I normally find that being zoomed right to the left and just seeing the thumbnails is enough for me to make a selection from because I'm always shooting shorter clips and then I can trim things down on the timeline. And we can also show our waveforms here. So if audio is important in your edit, you can see where the audio is, so where someone's speaking and where those cuts might be um, as they're talking. And we can also group them by the date that things were created, the scene, the reel, um, and by some other options here as well. So the so we can sort them by the name of the clip, the date the clip was created, um, and also things like the duration as well, which would be useful if you're trying to kind of sort through and do a little treasure hunt through the hours and hours of footage that you've uh, shot. So that's a quick overview of getting clips down to the, the timeline. There's lots more to cover in this topic, but if you do have any questions, then leave them below, um, and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.